Well, I am excited and a little bit nervous to be here and just really sharing my ideas how we want to make math and learning stick, but really I feel we have this opportunity of post-it times, right? One of the things I'm trying to make stick is I'm changing from saying student to scholar. And I borrowed this from a local school district we're working with. And it, when I looked up the definition and owned it, and I think that's really important, it really said so much more to me. So hopefully I make that stick throughout the presentation, and this is what we want. We want that learning to be this strong and this creative. We want our students to be looking at mathematics from all different angles and understanding things and taking a different perspective. So I hope the contractor I have right now isn't doing that for my bathroom. Um, and we're given this opportunity, and here's where the post-it concept comes in. We have all those standards, and we're mixing them up. We're putting together projects and context. We have to be flexible. Maybe we have this. All right, and so this is actually how I really think learning sticks, is when you have good visuals and a sense of humor. And so that summed it up very nicely for me, because what we're dealing with is we've got to keep their attention. We want things to be retained. If one in four teenagers doesn't remember stuff about their friends, we know that's important. They're not going to remember the math. The attention span's going from 12 seconds to 8 seconds, the goldfish are winning. And actually, let's learn from the goldfish. So about two years ago, someone dropped four or five pet goldfish in this lake in Colorado. There are now 3,000 goldfish, so maybe nine seconds is enough. I don't know. Um, <laughs> let's go beyond the notes. It's not the note. It's not the piece of paper. It's what people were able to do with those post-its. They could be more creative. They could communicate differently. And I think that's what we had this opportunity with the mathematical practices. Our students. Oh, our scholars can be more productive, and they can express mathematics in different ways. Let them engage in those practice standards, and I really believe it's when they say, I can do it, I can see it, I know what to use. Just like I own looking the, up the definition of a scholar, we want our students to own these math practices, not necessarily as numbers, one through eight, but how they put it all together. And these are the math teaching practices from the principles to action. And I think those will help us. If we have that focus, we give them the opportunity to be inquisitive, inquire and say what they want to know and learn, we'll move things forward. We do want to avoid this. So when we're trying to make that stick, what do we all do? We go ahead and we reteach. We make sure all the gaps are filled. We don't give the students the opportunity and they will surprise you. Let them find and fill in the holes. And don't let someone else take your family photo on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's missing, and you probably can make some observations that I'm the shortest one in the family. All right? But make connections, but connections that are real for your students. If you can make this connection, you're probably dating yourself. <laughs> but oh, everyone knows what the pencil can do on that, right? The pencil spools, the cassette, and all that. So we want to make those connections natural, just like the natural stickiness from flowers, right? We want them to learn mathematics. We want to give them opportunities, though, in the context where we think they're going to use it. They're not going to be filling out a worksheet. They're going to be applying things. And yes, it's going to be messy, right? It's going to be messy when you use those manipulatives. I had Algebra two students pouring plaster of Paris cones that they sliced to learn about conic sections. It was really messy, but they, it stuck with them. And so the other thing that sticks is when we're flexible like the post-it notes and take advantage of happenstance and teachable moments. That yellow was the scrap paper next door on the post-it notes. I had a student who was struggling with integers and finding the answer, and she went up to me. I happened to have the number line next to me, and she pointed every single interval. That was a teachable moment. We got to talk in mathematical language and discourse. So I think all of those things, the visuals, the humor, those mathematical practices when the students own it, if we have this, it's an opportunity. It's a challenge. We're math educators. We love challenges. We can make this happen.
All right. And for the estimation folks out there, how many post-it notes did this office use? What's too high? What's too low? I think they ended up saying they used 8,024. Thank you.